Hi everyone. We are watching a simulation. I'm in my third round of 15 minutes and uh, it hasn't done much more than this. Changed slightly from time to time. I'll give it another 15 and uh, but I'm going to listen to a program because I've been sitting here in the quiet the whole time not knowing what was going to happen. <laughs> well, I was going to be talking or not. So I'm going to put my program on and listen to it while I'm waiting. Hope you like it. It's just something I listen to. Seven Devil Kings of Hell. Seven Devil Kings of Hell. Now, what you're going to notice right here is that we're going to identify the names of these seven Devil Kings of Hell. And you're going to find out right here that it's going to be different rulership. But these seven Devil Kings are referring to the one and same person, yet different rulership right here. So he is a king over this realm. He's a king also of this other realm. He's another king of this realm. So the seven devil kings are going to identify the name. It's all going to be the one and the same person, but he has different rulership as well. We're going to look at 2 Samuel chapter 23, verse 6. The first one is Belial. Belial. 2 Samuel chapter 23. We'll read verse 6. If you search the word Belial in your King James Bible, it is one of the most used names of Satan in the Old Testament. Next to the word Satan, it's going to be Belial. Belial is a very common word used in the Old Testament. It's going to mean worthlessness. It's from the Hebrew word Belial. 2 Samuel chapter 23, and we will read verse 6. You'll notice right here, it'll always refer to sons of Belial, a child of Belial. You'll see that all over the Bible. Because why? It's referring to worthlessness, having no worth. But the sons of Belial shall be all of them as thorns thrust away, because they cannot be taken with hands. So notice right here in this context, it is as it's worthless, thorns thrust away. So that is found in the Hebrews most times. We're going to look at Revelation chapter 12 and verse 9. Revelation chapter 12 and verse 9. The most common one, which we all know, is Satan. Now the thing that's interesting about this is that Satan, he's also referred to as a dragon and serpent. And then obviously the common word devil. Now, in Genesis chapter 3, this is something to think about. In Genesis chapter 3, when it says the serpent spoke to Eve, some people were thinking, is it unfair that the snakes, that all of the creation of the snakes got judged just because of Satan, one serpent? But you got to realize this. It is very likely it is not talking about a snake, but his title, serpent. You might say, why is that? Because when God cursed the serpent, that you're going to crawl on your belly and dust shall be your meat, that is fulfilled at the millennium at Isaiah. He said, dust shall be the serpent's meat. So we see right here, and all of creation has to be blessed by God at the millennium, right? So we see right here that this is more referring. It is very likely it can refer to a title. Now, I am open to the possibility. It could be a snake, so I'm open to that one, too. It could be. But then from the scriptures, it is very likely it could be just a title. Now, we're going to see that Satan, what he's connected to, is a dragon and serpent. You're going to see quite often what he's going to refer to as some reptilian. That's where did you get the word reptilians from, huh? Like these alien stuff. Anyways, reptilian, aquatic, and he is also referred to the disgusting, creeping, crawling creatures, insects. We're going to look at Revelation chapter 12. And we will read verse 9. The Bible says right here, And the great dragon, see, so he's a dragon, was cast out, that old serpent. So that serpent is that dragon, is that dragon called the devil and Satan. So you see that dragon's name, that serpent's name, is devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. So he's connected to a fire-breathing dragon, reptilian creature. Let's also look at 2 Corinthians 11. 2 Corinthians 11. You're also going to see another name, Lucifer. So we see a realm of dragons right here. Worthlessness. And then we see light. 
So if Satan can't fool you with this, this is how he always fools people. I saw Jesus. Well, you know, it can't be of the devil because I see so much light, so much light. No, that, you got to realize this, Lucifer is, you know what it means? It means light bearer. That's what it means, light bearer. We're going to look at 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 14. The Bible says what? Satan? Satan, right? Satan is transformed into what? An angel of light. Isaiah 14 and verse 12, what does it say? Isaiah 14 and verse 12, it says, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer? So we see another name right here, Lucifer. That's connected. And then we see... A king right here, a reptilian dragon serpent. He also reigns with light as well. And then we see also right here as worthlessness. Now we're going to look at another one. Let's look at Matthew chapter 12. Matthew chapter 12. So we see how he reigns. He's a king of light, serpents and dragons, and then also as worthlessness. And then another one we're going to see right here. He also rules and reigns. Lord of the flies, Beelzebub. Thus, he is connected to insects as well. We're going to look at Matthew chapter 12, and we will read verse 34. So we're going to look at two passages, Matthew 12 and Mark chapter 5. But we're going to read Matthew 12 first. Notice his name is mentioned. The Bible says right here at verse 24, But when the Pharisees heard it, they said, This fellow doth not cast out devils, but by Beelzebub, there's his name, the prince of the devils. So we see right here, prince of devils, that's obviously Satan. And then that name mentioned, Beelzebub. Now in Mark chapter 5, this is why it's interesting. You ever wondered how Satan can possess and that passage in Matthew 12 is in context of casting out demons, right, spirits? Now, the question is this. If you read the passage in Mark chapter 5, this guy got possessed by a thousand devils. How in the world are you going to squeeze a thousand devils unless it is likened to what? The size of flies. And notice, Beelzebub means Lord of the Flies. And that verse said that Beelzebub is a prince of the devils. See, that's why you can fit a lot of things inside. We're going to look at right here, um, Mark chapter 5. We will read verses 8 through 9. The Bible says right here, For he said unto him, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. But how many? And he asked him, What is thy name? And he answered, saying, My name is Legion, for we are many. Legion means like a thousand, that many numbers. All right, we're also going to look at Revelation chapter 9, Revelation chapter 9, verse 4, Revelation chapter 9, verse 4. Seven devil kings. Satan, he has rulership over all kinds of different realms, you notice. But see, people are only looking at one realm, and because they only look at one realm, the Bible says we are not to be ignorant of Satan's devices, 2 Corinthians 2. In the last days there shall be doctrines of devils, 1 Timothy chapter 4. People only see him as this. And because they only see him as this, as this one king, they ignore what? This one, for example. And that's why they're going to get, a lot of them are going to get fooled. We're going to look at another passage. Revelation chapter 9 and verse 4. He has also another name. We're going to find out right here he's also called Apollyon. Apollyon. Why? Because he is an angel of death. Satan has the power of death. You're going to find out. But then there was one who went down to hell, and he had the victory, and took the keys of what? Hell and of death. Yeah. Amen. Stole the keys from Satan. All right, let's look at Revelation chapter 9 and verse 4. And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. Now, what is this? These are locusts, verse 3. Locusts. Locusts? These demons of locusts, remember, what is Satan likened to? Demons likened to. See that? It all connects together. Now it makes
makes more sense. See, scripture with scripture brings more light to understanding all the other stuff. So notice that the smoke of locusts, now, can you believe it? There are these Bible scholars who teach that these are just ordinary locusts. What in the world? You think these are ordinary locusts? Did you read verse 2? These guys come out from the bottomless pit. If you look at verse 5, that description at verse 5 is not an ordinary locust. Come on. <laughs> is that a locust in verse 5? It's a devil. Let's keep reading right here. We're going to look at verse 11. And they had a king over them. Locusts don't have a king at the book of Proverbs. So see, this, is a, this ain't no ordinary locusts. These are devils. They had a king over them. Who's the king of these quote-unquote locusts? Which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue hath his name Apollyon. So in Hebrew it's Abaddon, Greek is Apollyon. Why? Because if you look up those words, it's connected to death. You'll notice those insects, those locusts, what? They were to injure people. They were to injure people. And then you'll notice right here that in verse 11, he's the angel of that bottomless pit. Now you'll notice right here that the book of Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 14, Hebrews 2, 14, you don't have to turn over there, but we can see right here that Satan had the power of death. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, but also himself, Jesus Christ took, likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is, notice, the devil. So you'll see right here, he's also the king of death right here. That's why, what does Satan try to do? Satan, you know, he's a murderer from the beginning, the Bible says in the book of John 8. Job chapter 1. What did God have to tell Satan? Because he knows Satan's rulership, what he wants to do. He wants to kill people. What did God tell Satan? You can hurt him, injure him, but don't kill him. Don't kill him, you see. Here's another one right here. We're also going to look at Isaiah chapter 27, verse 1. Isaiah chapter 27, verse 1. Leviathan is another name. No, this is not some water dinosaur. I'm sorry, all right? This is like young earth creationists. I deny evolution. I am a creationist as well. But you know what? Most important of all, I am a Bible believer. And if the Bible says this is not a dinosaur, this is not a dinosaur. All right? Plus, isn't it kind of dangerous that you're trying to tie this as an innocent animal, creature of God, when the Bible shows you this is not an innocent creature? This is a devil. Don't make something demonic innocent. See? Let's look at Isaiah chapter 27, and we will read verse 1. Okay, you'll notice right here, this cannot be just some ordinary water dinosaur. This has to be Satan, because look at Isaiah chapter 27, verse 1. The Bible says right here, In that day, the Lord with, with his sore and great and strong sword shall punish Leviathan the piercing serpent, even Leviathan that crooked serpent, and he shall slay the dragon that is in the sea. You notice he has to punish this creature. You think that's an innocent creature? Not only that, he's called what? Dragon, serpent. Who's the dragon? Who's the serpent? Satan, see? So this is obviously Satan. There's going to come a special day God has to punish this creature. So you'll notice right here that he's the monster of the sea. Monster of the sea. That's why in Job chapter, go to Job 41. The Bible says, Canst thou draw Leviathan with an hook, or his tongue with a cord, which thou lettest down? So all the creationists, they, they go to Job 41, and they assume that's referring to some dinosaur, water dinosaur, but they, don't, they fail to look at Isaiah chapter 27. But not only that, did you read verse 34? What is this Leviathan? He is a king over what? All the children of pride. See that? That's definitely Satan right here. All right. Now, what did God mention before Leviathan in context? Chapter 41, verse 1 is Leviathan. But right before he discusses Leviathan, he talks about another creature. Okay, they're finished sharing. So I am now. We're running out of time. Under description, I will put down who's speaking this teaching. And God bless you all. Have a beautiful night. On to the next place. See you on the flip side.